Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Satellar Knight Demise deck yet again. I haven't made any changes to it, basically, other than uh, just swapping out some cards in the main deck uh, for some things that were in the side, simply because, like, I just want to be a buster. <laughs> That's all I want to do. So there's things like Anti-Spell in the main deck now, alongside the Imperial Order, uh, and cutting down on things like Strike and uh, nonsense like that. I can't remember what the other card that was cut was. I think it was, like, the third Duality or something like that. Just because, like, uh... I mean, it's, the deck seems to operate fine enough as is. Uh, like I said, like in multiple instances, I've considered like cutting Card of Demise from the list in general, uh, and maybe doing something like bumping Vega to three so that you could just potentially open interactions like Vega plus a nuke or Vega plus Deneb on the regular like basis, and then make Bujinte Sukiyomi or uh, or just make like turn one uh, Trivers and stuff with uh, with the uh, Dark Teller Knight. So like. There's a few different options for how this deck can function, uh, but as far as how its range of motion and function is, is very limited, unfortunately, but, I mean, hey, it's a Satel deck. What do you expect? You're literally just trying to win with fucking traps, and you're just trying to make your opponent literally probably hate life? I don't know. That, that might be what some people are into, and I may be one of them from time to time. But... Let's not waste any more time. I mean, you should know about this deck from basically the previous video or the fact that it's Satel and it's been around since 2014. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump straight into the game and uh, and basically just see what other results we can gather uh, with this deck, essentially. Let us go ahead. All right, so it's been a while since I've had Iradium here to, uh, to do some stuff with me, so this is great. Uh, he's been really busy as of late uh, as far as this goes. Okay, so my options are to a Nunkle High and duality and try to dig for a card, or I can Vega, a Nukuhai, send a Neb, and then just discard the duality for uh, for a Bujinte Tsukiyomi, and then have the, the anti-spell and all that. So I think that's just the better option, because um, I'm going to be seeing two cards, uh, I'd be seeing three cards with duality over the two cards I'm going to see with uh, Tsukiyomi. He's playing a 60 card deck, so probably something that this anti-spell is going to have super high impact against. Uh, but so we'll use this Anukahai to send a Neb to Grave, obviously. We're going to set the Dimensional Barrier and the Anti-Spell. Uh, try to buster our way to the win, uh, because that's basically how this deck goes. I don't think I've actually resolved, like, a good card of Demise with this deck. Uh, like, it might actually just not even be worth it um, to run Demise in this deck anymore, ever since we've gotten uh, the Dark Teller Knight. Because I believe the last time I played this deck with Demise in it, like, realistically as a reasonable option, was in, uh, like, Summer 2016. And at that point... Uh, at that point, we uh, we didn't have the Dark Teller Knight, because that came out in Invasion uh, Vengeance. So that's that's definitely something that's an option, um, is just not playing Card of Demise in the deck anymore. Um, I'd probably still play Duality, though, because like that uh, that works out pretty well. Uh, but So we'll detach the Vega, draw two more cards. Really? Another Duality and another Nuclear High? Well, all right then. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit me, man. Um, not really something I was expecting, and not really something that I wanted, but I mean, it's workable. I don't have access to an Altair, or a Call of the Haunted to bring back to Neb to get to Altair, so that could be a problem. What could also be a problem is if this Anti-Spell gets responded to with something like Twin Twister. Uh, if I had Anti-Spell plus Imperial, uh, Imperial Order, then that would be, like, the good interaction. Uh, there it is! There's the Twin Twister! Well, alrighty then. Fairy Tale Snow. Okay. No, I mean, it's a grass, it's a grass deck. Okay, thank God, he's hitting the duality. <laughs> he's hitting the card I care about the least. Yeah. Amazing. Good. Uh, so now as long as I can use something like Dimensional Barrier to uh, protect this uh, Tsukiyomi until my next turn, I'll be able to use it to cycle through more cards. Uh, but basically, I shouldn't even, like... Okay, he's playing Infernoids. Um, I shouldn't even, like, try to, like, talk about Twin Twister, because every time I do talk about Twin Twister in response to an anti-spell fragrance, it always happens. You can look back at literally every single video where I've tried to flip an anti-spell, and I'm like, if he has Twin Twister, then shit. Um, and then, like, the Twin Twister just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> like, that's that's how this goes. Uh, but so, let's see, he doesn't have access to any, like, good Infernoids engraved from what I've seen. Um, yeah, he's only got the little ones engraved, and then he's got the Fairy Tale Snow. Uh, so that's kind of all right. Uh, if he decides to use Fairy Tale Snow now, which would actually kind of be kind of okay, uh, Fairy Tale Snow to banish some, uh, you'd Book of Moon the Tsukiyomi, but that's not really what matters. Um, and then he would be able to uh, do some other stuff. Uh, okay, so this is a Petrulia, and I imagine this Petrulia is going to be used 
on this dimensional barrier, which I'm then just going to chain 100%, and I'm going to call Synchro, uh, just because I don't want to deal with an Omega, uh, and I don't think anything like Castell would be too big of a problem for me right here, but I'm probably still just going to lose this game, 100% uh, to the fact that his deck is inherently better suited than mine is to pressure. Um, to pressure me specifically, <laughs> let's 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 remind ourselves about this. But if he makes something like Castell, at this point he's really good off because he can make Castell, uh, he can make Utopia the Lightning, he can make Minerva. Uh, well, Minerva I'm actually okay with because that doesn't out the Sukiomi unless he summons another Infernoid. Um, so that really okay. He milled the Light Sworn, so that was good. But he keeps milling the small ones. Like he hasn't milled any of the big Infernoids. <laughs> like what a what a life to be living. Into the Void, okay. Trying to draw into more of those cards, yeah. Trying to, are we are we gonna get to a uh, to a that grass look greener? We're gonna get to that card, or is that something that's just not gonna happen? Um, but he actually got to draw a card off the Minerva. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> wow. Um, and then that led into another draw, and then to another draw two. Uh, so based off whether or not he has a big Infernoid to attack over the Sukiyomi, or even if he has something like Antra. Oh well, there goes uh, his hand, and here comes. That grass looks greener. Uh, but he's not going to be able to do anything with it, actually. His deck is 31, and my deck is 32. So he's got to go for a reasoning. Um, I've seen him mill. Uh, I've seen him mill. He's got one Snow in Grave and one Snow here. He's got a Decatron over here that I saw. And he's got two Raidens in Grave. Um, I can't imagine... It's probably more likely for him to hit a Decatron than anything else. So we're going to go with that. Okay, spells, spells, Antra, a big one, fuck, uh, another big one, fuck, uh, Onuku, shit, well at least I hit the right card with Decatron, but now he's got several, <laughs> he's got Seismus, and he's got Shit, and he's got Onuku, all of which are going to be problems for me to deal with. Um, the thing that I would probably prefer to see happen, um, like, now, would probably be something along the lines of... A Nuku being summoned, because then if he summons a Nuku and nukes the board, uh, the Minerva will mill three more cards, right? Um, and then I'm only dealing with the spell and trap negation that a Nuku has, but I still don't have any plays on my following turn with just this Anuku hide. Um, that's the problem. I don't have access to an Altair, I didn't draw into Call of the Haunted or Oasis of Dragon Souls, I didn't get any of that stuff, and Tsukiyomi was the correct play to do there, because... If I had summoned a Nukuhai and then sent Deneb, assuming everything reset itself in the same uh, sort of numerical value that the deck had um, at the point after I Nukuhai, I would have just duality and revealed duality and Nukuhai uh, and then something else. So it would have been like digging for uh, digging for nothing that mattered. Uh, but so he is summoning a Nukuhai, but he's not board wiping, uh, which is arguably also correct. In fact, uh, I mean, like it, the difference would be like. If he board wiped, he could nuke the Minerva, and uh, it has to be destroyed by an opponent's card effect so it wouldn't mill. I believe I said it could mill earlier, but I'm actually just incorrect. But the Minerva would die, and then he would just be able to hit for 3k, and then he'd have that. Uh, but with this situation here, it's actually just doing less damage to me immediately, but he could use the Anuku, uh, the Anuku to tribute off the Minerva to vanish a spell that I draw, uh, which would be pretty alright, honestly. Uh, but so what we're dealing with here is that the card I need to draw is Altair. That is 100% the card I need to draw. That is the card that will allow me to get out of this situation, is Altair. If I draw Altair, I'll summon Altair, bring back the Neb, get a search. Uh, that's not Altair. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no. We losing. We losing and we bruising. Our souls and our egos. Uh, yeah, I don't even know why I'm looking at this. There's literally nothing I can do here. <laughs> Shit. 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 I do not like. I do not like. I'm going to normal summon this. I'm going to use its effect to send another Deneb to Grave. Because uh, I don't want to draw those. Uh, or I can send... I can't send a Nukuhai. So if I, if I could send a Nukuhai, I would send a Nukuhai. Because at least the Neb would be a decent draw. Um, in the fact of like I could draw it, search an Altair, and then pray to God that I survive. <laughs> but uh, as it stands... This is all we're going to be doing. Uh, now, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm probably going to Dimensional Barrier, Calling the Seas. Uh, well, actually, I just don't win in general. 
Um, because he's still got Fairy Tail, Snow, and Grave. So even if I draw Altair, I'll bring back Deneb, but then I'll just get all I'll get uh, I'll get Fairy Tail Snowed. So that's a that's an issue. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate this now. I mean, there's no reason for me to hold it. Uh, the only thing that this the only thing that letting his Minerva resolve will do is give him a better situation in the game. And his Fairy Tail Snow is locked and loaded for at least three summons. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is gonna get spell or trap. I did not remember that. I thought it was just spell for some reason, but I'm actually just incorrect, but it's fine. This gets the Minerva off the board. This actually works for me a little bit better, uh, because I'm, now I'm not dealing with the Minerva, and the only thing that I could really do to... Okay, this is great. This, this is a fantastic situation for me. He's getting greedy, and when he gets greedy, that is when we have the possibility of just winning outright, because if he continually gets greedy like this and he puts this fairy tale snow on the board uh, is this thing mandatory uh, you know it's you can but he is putting it face down for some reason uh, it would be more damage to just attack over it and then attack with the Anuku uh, but this is 3000 versus 3050 the other way uh, so so it's uh, it's not like a huge differential in terms of in terms of what damage would be done but still uh, this is a clean 3k so now his fairy tale snow is out of the graveyard, and he doesn't have a way to just put it immediately back into the grave because this has to respond only to spell and trap activations, right? So what we have here is that we have a situation where now I can legitimately draw into um, into an Altair and get the Neb and the uh, search and make a Triver and uh, and then try to win that way. But like, I can make Triver. And then uh, I could just still die. <laughs> so that's the problem, is I'm still just going to die, uh, potentially, because he could just resummon the Anuku uh, and board wipe. Uh, but if I leave Trevor on the board, then uh, it would allow me to summon back my uh, my stuff. But I mean, he would just put one of the small. No, no, it was still it would still die off the Anuku, uh, so that he wouldn't be able to DD Crow my target in response. So well. This card doesn't help the situation and does not change the status quo at all. Hooey! We're just gonna activate the Dark Hole. He's gonna Anuku and put Fairy Tail Snow back in his grave, um, which actually isn't really correct. He should have just Anuku itself since it's my last card. Anuku tribute itself, and that way, off of the Fairy Tail Snow, um, he could like summon a different Infernoid to come back with it. Or if he had like one of the level four or lower ones in his hand next turn, he could summon it and then summon the Anuku back. Uh, but Regardless, I'm just, I'm losing this one. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, like I said, his deck is just inherently better than mine because it can play from the graveyard. It can play from a bigger resource pool than my own. Uh, basically, the only real way that I get to win this game is if I'm able to allow that anti-spell to resolve. Uh, that that floodgate, that anti-spell was pretty important uh, for the uh, for the situation of what we needed to happen. As far as uh, as far as allowing me to win this game, but the Twin Twister came out of nowhere, as it usually does. Every single time I try to speak about Twin Twister um, in response to my floodgates, it's always there. Or even Twin Twister in response to my back row, it's always there. Uh, so I mean, like, I it's just it's sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good, right? Uh, that's definitely something that is a true case. But anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis. Once it hits stores, like the first week of May, I'll be doing a giveaway for that for the people that have supported me throughout the month of April. So if you're interested in that, then definitely get on over there. If you want to get access to my Discord server, check with me on a daily basis and also get them to uh, play games for videos like iradium heroes then you also want to check out one of the reward tiers over on patreon but if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel then be sure to check out second chance gaming's website which is also linked in the description they are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and i'm a big fan of how they do business with what i've dealt with thus far both pricing and shipping wise but definitely check out their site and let them know that phoenix sent you but other than that that is it for this video again thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care i will see you in the next video